OK. Now we know how to build a Django and how to use that framework, we can start our project. As we know, based on the requirements, we need to build a backend API for our app, uh, application, which is MovieRater. So we will need to create a Django. We'll need to also connect a Django REST framework to it. And we need to build a few models, serializers, URLs, and views. And that will be it. And in the next few videos, we'll do that together. So first thing first, what we need to do, I have terminal open here. I am inside the desktop here. I will create a new folder. So CD movie rater API. At the moment, I'm creating just a folder. Uh, sorry. So what I need to do is mkdir and then movie rater API. So that's been created. I need to move to movie rater API now. And inside that folder, I can create a virtual environment. We know how to do it already. So Python 3 m vnv vnv we need to activate it and this is activated now so what we need to do is we need to install our requirements so we need to install django ah we need to pip install django Also, we need to do Django REST framework. And that's been installed. We can also run this command pip install upgrade pip as suggested. And we have everything set up for us now. So let's open this new uh, folder, this new application inside our PyCharm. So we'll go open. That's our new folder. And here we have our application. So virtual environment is here. We can do terminal. You can see it's automatically activated so that means it's all working fine so what we need to do is now we need to create a project and an application django admin start project and we call it movie rater and we would like to do it in the current folder and you can see here movie rater has been created here. What we also need to do is we'll need to create an application. So Django admin start up and then name of the application and we can call our application API. And you can see API is here. So the reason why I call it API is because we'll have just one kind of application that's a very small application and this will be responsible for our API communication with our front end. So I call it API and in, inside here we'll put all our logic, all our uh, models and everything that will be just a exposed API to our front end. So this is how I call it. If you have something bigger, maybe it's not a good idea to uh, call it API. I should split it into uh, smaller applications, but for our tutorial, this is just fine. So we have uh, that. Now we can make sure that everything is uh, kind of working. So I will do Python 3, manage by run server. And we can make sure it's uh, working fine, clicking on this link. And you can see Django is working. So all of that is uh, fine. What we will need to uh, do is what we can do is we can try to run this. So right click, run manage. It will fail because there is no configuration yet. And we can do edit configuration here and then put 
run server here and next time whenever we would like to run the server we can click it here and it will spin up our server. So what else we need to do? As you can see here, we have 17 unapplied migrations. We haven't done any migrations yet. And that's built-in migration, as you remember from this settings. We already have some application in our settings. So all of this admin out and so on, that has its own uh, migrations. And we need to run this command to apply them to our database. So now we'll kill that project, we can go to terminal, I can kill that control C and then we can paste python manage by migrate. All of that has been added to our database and now we can use our application. So basically we prepare everything now, so we have our project, we have our application, we install Django and Django REST framework and it's ready to be uh, started so we can start building our appli application from now. Okay, in this video we will create our routing and we'll create URLs. So we have our application here now and we have URLs here. I can remove that giant comment for now and we'll have at the moment simple admin here and that's our path to admin but what we can do is we can actually add our second url level so i will create a new file and i will name it urls pi and that will be urls for our api here at the moment i will just copy that and paste it here so that will be let's name it for a moment new that is just a placeholder so I will have a new file to refer to. So what I can do here is I can add another path. So I will duplicate the whole line. I clicked command D, so that's duplication in the whole line. And the new path is API. So whatever we will go to API, we want to include our URLs from the API URLs. We need to import that first, so from Django. Django conf URLs we will import include and that include we can use here so include and then we can do include API URLs like that so what else we need to do we from here we refer to admin or to API. What we need to do is we need to register also our API in installed apps. So we need to do actually two things. So we haven't registered REST framework yet, framework like that, and we can register our application, which is API, as you can see here. So once I have that in the installed apps, I will need to also go to terminal and I will do Python tree manage pi migrate not until apply everything is good if you have something then it will be applied then we have this admin and we have api if i go uh, here now you can see here two paths are available admin and api so admin is working as it was before and then api i can go here and the API slash and you can see here that new is available already for us and at the moment it's just a placeholder because we don't have anything here to display but we'll build new models and uh, new things later on and we'll, we can create a router for now and we can actually uh, fill it later on so what else uh, is missing we haven't created our super user we can go to terminal and we can do Python tree manage pi and then create super user and we click, I can leave it blank to Christian and then email address I will leave it blank so just enter and I will use Christian very unsecure but I don't mind and uh, this is 
Oh uh, yes, I would like to keep it. So my username and password is Christian. But please uh, pick something more more secure because if you at any point will put it on production and someone will discover the username and password, uh, then it will have an access to all your application. And remember that creating super user, uh, you create a user with all permissions. So that might be very dangerous. Uh, for this tutorial, I don't really care about the security because this is not a live application and it will never be. So Christian Christian is just easy to remember and use. Okay, so we have our uh, user, then we can uh, use our Django here. What I can do is admin, and then Christian Christian, I can log in. You can see here everything is kind of working. So we have our URLs. So let's build our router and we'll have it ready for a later use. So what we need to do is from REST framework, import routers, and then we can create our router. router routers, default router here. And then later on, we can actually register some of the models. At the moment, we don't have any models register. So what we can do is we can only push it to pad. So we will make a empty pad and then we can do include. And uh, actually we need to import include the same way as we've done here. So we'll just copy this and that include will include our router router URLs like that. So whatever we will have here register on the router, it will be available there. So our URLs are set up. We have uh, everything I've done and prepared for us to use. So in the next uh, video, we'll start actually building our uh, data. So we'll need to create models, we'll need to create serializers, we'll also need to create uh, views. So we'll be doing that in the next videos. Okay, in this video, we will create our first models in our application. So let's open a models PI here, and we can create models here. As you remember, the way to create a model is class and the name of the model. What, we, what models do we need in our application? Basically, based on our requirements, we'll need to have a list of movies and also we'll rate that movie. So we'll need two models. First will be movie. So we can do models. Model, like that. And then we can have a title. This field will be models, char field. And let's say max length. I think for a movie title will be 32 will be more than enough. And then we can have a description. And we can do models, models. And this one we can do text field because that will be much larger. So we can do max length, let's say we can have a 360 a character, uh, just an arbitrary number here. So what we have is we have our movie here. We also need to create a new class, new model for our rating, like that. And in the same way, so we models, model, import it, and here what we can do is we'll have few things. First, we need to have a reference to our movie. So our movie will be models for key, and then we'll refer our movie here. So we will have a reference from the rating to movie. So whatever we'll create a rating, we'll need to create it for a specific movie. Another I can actually duplicate this and I will have a reference to user. The reason why I'm having this is I will 
kind of explain you and show you that in a second and once we will start to test our API it will make more sense but what we want to have is if we create a rating for our movie we will have a reference to the movie so this rating will be for specific movie but also we'll need to also tell what user create that uh, uh, rating so basically if we have a login user that user will be sent with the request and we need to store that user so user won't be able to create million uh, ratings for a one movie so one rating per movie per user so this in this way we need to reference the user but the user is not available here so we need to import it as you can see here the class a user doesn't exist but we can import it actually from Django so from Django contrib out models import user so we have our user imported from the Django contrib authentication models that's built in model inside Django as we can go here you can see users here that's a user built in in the, in the authentication and what we are doing here is we import that user from from Django itself and now we have two references so we have movie and we also have that user what we also need to do is do on delete and then we'll do models cascade cas, cascade cascade like that and now we'll do it for both so basically what I'm saying here is if we remove that movie we also need to remove that rating so if we remove that model then we'll cascade it and remove the rating because if we'll have a rating with that movie and the movie will be removed from our database it will break our application it will break the logic so whatever this model will be removed we cascade it and remove the rating as well so we have two references now but it will be good to also have some kind of rating so we can call it stars so we creating our rating we will tell what is the number of stars we would like to give it and that to our mo model so what, what we can do is we can use models and then we can do integer field so integer field will store the integer for us but how can we actually tell Django that we would like to have only from one to five stars we can use validators I haven't uh, talked about the valid validators yet but it is something uh, available in the Django and we can import that and use it in the field so from Django core validators we can import max length val uh, max value validator and also we can import minimum value validator so we have two validators here and inside here we can actually use the validators in the field and we can specify what will be the minimum value for this integer and the maximum value for this integer so what we need to do is we need to type validators here and that's going to be array so we do square brackets here and then we can decide it so minimum valid, uh, value validator and then we we do parentheses and then we can decide the minimum validator is one so i do comma here and then i will do max value validator here inside that square bracket and then I can decide that this max value will be 5 so basically we are saying that stars it's an integer field so the whole number and then validators will use minimum value 1 and then max value 5 so we can only accept values 1 2 3 4 and 5 so that will be a very good for our stars because we don't want to have a user to pass any value uh, he likes in the star so we'll uh, put it concise and it will be very useful also another 
things that I haven't talked uh, about it yet is unique uh, together. So we know how to do unique things, like we can decide that this field will be unique or this field will be unique, but I haven't uh, talked yet about unique together. If we do class meta like this, what we can decide for this uh, rating is we can decide on unique together. We need to do brackets like this and inside another I will do our user and movie. And also I can do index together in the same way. So basically what I'm saying here that if you create a rating the only accepted values will be if the user and movie won't be already in our database. So let's say we have one movie and I, I will go to the testing later on and I will show you that on the example how we've done this. So basically what we are saying is if we have already rating for a specific movie by one user and if you would like to create a new rating for the same movie with the same user it will be rejected because we have that unique together here and also we do index together in the same way so that's a setup for this model that will help us to not accept any values that won't be uh, acceptable for us so we want to design this in the way that will uh, work and it will be bulletproof and this is the way to do it so I will save it now and you can see here we have two classes to two, two models now what we need to do is we need to create migrations and we need to apply it in our database so let's do it now so I will go Python manage by make my migrations supposed to be Python And another typo, manage by make migrations. And you can see here two models has been created, movie and rating. So what we need to do is we need to migrate it now. Migrate like this and that's been created. So I will go to admin and I can register these two models here. So we go admin, site, register and then model is one is movie and I will duplicate it and another one is rating we also need to import it so from models import movie and rating like that so we have that done and it, then if I go here and I will refresh it it cannot be reached probably we don't have our server running so I go run click run here coming back here and then I'll refresh it and you can see here movies and ratings are here I can click here and if I will add new movie it is available title and description if I go back to API and then ratings if I will try to add we have movie at the moment we don't have any and then we have users we have one user in our database and then we can do a number of stars so if I will pick here actually this this field has no validation but the junk will refuse it if I will try to pass something different than uh, our validation there so we have a basic model set up, we haven't done anything with uh, serializers yet and we haven't done anything with views. So we'll focus on that in the next uh, video and then we'll start 
testing our API. At the moment uh, we have uh, everything configured so we could per add it, our models, our records in database in this uh, admin section but our goal is uh, to use the API and uh, return the JSON. So we will try to debug it and uh, make it work with our JSON using the Postman. Okay, let's set up our views and serializers to expose our models to our API. So I can close the admin now and we have our models here and also I will close this URLs here and also I can do the settings here. So we have models, we need to create a new file and we'll call it serializers.pi. This is the same way as we've done before. So first I will import, uh, sorry, from REST framework, import serializers. We'll import serializer and we'll create for each our model a new serializer. So class movie serializer and we'll do serializers model serializer. We've done that before and then we do class meta and inside here we can decide what will be in our serializer. So first the model it's gonna be our movie model. We need to import that so from current directory models import movie and then we can decide on the fields. So the fields will be Actually, that should be equal sign. Sorry, my mistake. So the fields should be, we have available ID, then we have title, and then we have description. And that's the same fields as our, we have title description here, and ID is added automatically for us by Django. So we have that serializer here. And then what we, I can do to speed up, I can just duplicate it. And then another serializer will be rating. So we need to also change this model to rating. And this, I will also import rating here. For rating, what we have is we have ID stars we have user and then we have movie. And we have our serializers uh, set up. What we also need to do is we need to go to the views and inside the views we'll create a views for each of the serializer. So as before, class movie view set like that and then we'll do we need to import that. So from REST framework, import view sets. And this view sets we can use here, model view set, like that. So what needs to include there? Query set. And that's gonna be our movie objects. And then we'll do all like that. We need to import our movie. So from models, import movie. Also, I will also import rating from here because we'll use it in a second. So we have our query set and then we'll do serializer class. What serializer for this movie view set? We have serializers here and that's our movie serializer. So I can pass it here. Actually, the serializer class, it's a tuple, so I can do it like that. And then also I need to import it. So from serializers import movie serializer and the serializer class and the query set is set up for our movies. Then I can duplicate this, control D, and then I will do rating view set and then 
what I have to do is I have already imported that so in this case we'll select all the ratings and also we'll use the rating serializer and this this one needs to be also imported from serializers like that so basically that's a typical setup as we have it uh, here and we've done that before so uh, there is nothing new i've done it quite fast but we uh, know how to do it from the previous uh, section when we talked about the uh, django so what we set up so far we have our models with the different fields then we create new file serializers and for each model we've created different serializer we tell the serializer which model we are using and what fields we would like to use it so we in that case we have two also in the view set uh, in the views we've created view set for each model so it's a lot of uh, typing here but basically we're creating view sets using uh, built-in uh, rest framework view set uh, the model view set here and we set up the query set which is what set of records from database we'd like to use and in our case we'd like to use all movies and then we tell also what serializer we will be using for the movie view set we're using movie serializer and for the rating view set we said we use rating serializer so all, all of that is already set up but what we can do also is we need to go to urls here and register our view sets in our router so router register and then we can register this uh, view sets as we see here i can copy that and register that on the router so the first argument will be movies which is just a string that will be inside our path and the second argument is the view set itself we need to import that so from views import movie view set and we have that here also i will register another view set which is rating view set so coming back here i import view set use it here and that will be ratings like that so i save it now and then i can run it and let's see what i can do in our i will copy that url and let's start to test our application so i will do like that and then i can go api and then movies that's what i register in our database and we have some problems now page not found api movie so let's come back here so let's try to debug it we'll go to the chrome and let's go to our urls like that and then we have admin and we have our api so let's go to api like that and then we have our movies and then we have our rating so everything looks like it's working here so i will click on movies and then tuple object is not callable so we can see uh error there and which one is that so basically that's a problem when we have a tuple that has been registered let me take a look in the view set and actually i made a mistake because the serializer class can't accept more than one so in our case it has to be just one serializer like that and then i will save it here so that's gone and then if i will refresh it now you can see i have empty results of uh, movies uh, just to make sure i will go the same with the rating uh ratings i misspell it so ratings like that and i have the same information here so what i can do is i can come back to the postman and send it again page not found not available and the reason for this is so i will copy that let's try this one 
ratings. And you can see empty red results there and movies. An empty result there. I think I had misspelled it, so that was movie instead of movies. So uh, our URLs are plural. So we have movies and ratings. So we have our application kind of running. So we have our movies API working and also the ratings. So at the moment we have nothing in our database. So in the next video, we'll try to create some records in our database. But for doing that, we are not going to use Django. We are not going to use this interface and that is available here as we can use it. But we'll try to do everything in our API in the Postman. And that will kind of mimic what we will also need to recreate later on in our front-end application. Okay, let's try to test our application a little bit. So what we'll need to do is let's try to create some records in our database. So I will pick a post method, which is for creating new records. And then we'll need to go to the body and I will do form data. So basically what we need to send to the movies. If I will try to send it now, you can see title and description is, this, uh, is required because we can't just post anything with uh, we can't post a title without the description. So let's create a movie called Titanic. Uh, sorry, we need to do a title Titanic and description romantic movie. And something. It doesn't really matter what we are doing. This is a kind of mock up data now. So let's try to send it now. We'll send it, and you can see here the record has been created. So if I will change the post to get now, I have one record in the database. And let's try to create a second one just to have something to work with. And then we'll have, let's say, avatar. And then description science fiction movie which blue guys whatever so we have title and description saved now if we come back to get we expecting two records and in fact we have two records so our post is working and then our get is working let's try our put put is for changing the database so changing the records we have so let's say we have our titanic here and this is id1 so if i will pass id in the url at the end one and then slash and i will use put method whatever i will send here it will be updated so let's say romantic movie i will just update description just to be romantic movie without that and something so i will send it now and you can see the result is updated if i'll go get all movies i have updated so this is uh, working fine let's create a third one to remove and i will create new records now for our purpose to remove it. So I have Titanic and Avatar that will that are valid records, but let's say Titanic for remove, I need to remove this one. So what I can do is we know that ID of this item is three. So we'll pass three here and then I will pick method delete here and then I will send it. So that's been removed. I don't see anything in the output here because we just removed the database, so there is nothing to output. And then if I will go get for the all movies, so movies slash and nothing else, you can see we're back to having two records in our database. So that's kind of proving that our application is working with the movies. So what can we do with the ratings now? So if I go ratings like that, there is no ratings now. So let's 
try to create a new rating. So I will try to post rating and let's say I will do stars and I will try to send, let's say three stars. I will, at the mom, uh, for, for the moment I will just remove the description here and we are trying to send the stars three. So what will happen here? User and movie is required. So I can do movie. We remember from the previous, if I will go movies here, that will open new tab and let's send a use movies here. So we have ID one and ID two. Let's create a movie one. We need to pass ID for that movie and then user. So what is actually our user? What we can do is if I go here to the admin and we will uh, I will show you later on how we can actually get the data for the login user when we'll have authentication. But if at the moment if we go to the users here and I will click on the Christian, you can see here user slash one change URL. That means this is the ID of that user. And in fact, it is the first user in database because we've created that one. So we can be sure the ID is one. So basically what we are doing here is we are trying to create a rating. We are trying to create a rating with a stars, three stars for movie one, which is our Titanic. And we are using our user which is also one. So let's try to do this now. And you can see here rating. That's ID of the rating. And then we have three stars for this user and for this movie. So if I will try to create a new one and the post is creating new records. So let's say I would like to change it for four and I will send it now. What will happen is the field user movie must be a unique set. And this is what I will, I told you about it when we had it, this models unique together here. So what we are trying to do here is we are trying to create a new record, new rating with the movie and user that are the same, uh, that's already exist in our database. We have a rating for this movie and we have a rating for this user already. So that will throw an error. And the reason for this is that unique together. This is form uniqueness, the user and movie, we cannot have the same one in the database. But we could use method put. If I will put it now, and you can see put is not allowed uh, here because we haven't specified what to do with a put yet. That's unique together. Also, it's kind of changing the way we can use our application and we will create actually our own uh, method later on and we can do all the validation and all our logic we can have it in there. But at the moment, we can see this is not available. Okay, so let's uh, try to create a new one. So I will do the post, but instead of the movie one that we already had a rating on, let's create a new movie. I mean, create new ratings for a new movie, which is this movie here, Avatar. And let's try to create a 10 stars. And then you can see, ensure the value is less than or equal five. So if I will try to do zero, ensure this value is greater or equal to one. And the reason we see that message is this validators we have here, minimum value and the maximum value. So you can see here when we write this, this maybe had no sense, but now when we start using our application and we start to pass some values that won't fit our database, then we we'll can see uh, some uh, very useful information here. And actually this will prevent us from, uh, from passing this. And in the same way, if I will try to pass any string here, you can see a valid integer is required. So Django is doing that at validation for us. We decided that this field 
is integer so it will validate basically on the type so integer only will be accepted not the strings like here and also we need to pass a correct number so we accept everything from 1 to 5 but if you pass something outside of that range then it won't be accepted because we tell the validators uh, to validate our input so basically that's uh, how it works we have a lot of uh, things uh, to do here so what we also we need to do we need to allow users to log in retrieve uh, the users uh, from the database and that user can be used for passing the ratings also we'll need to create our own method for having the uh, ratings and in this way we can actually disable built-in and just focus for put and post Mm, our own and also we'll need to create a few more serializers and having some built methods to put something more in the movies at the moment we don't display a serializer uh, we don't display any information about the ratings here but we could possibly uh, do that so we will do that in the next videos okay in this video, we will create our own method for rating a movie. As you remember from this section, from the previous video, we had a method, different methods to retrieve the movies and retrieve the ratings for that movie. But I said we will create a, our own method for rating a movie and we'll do that in this video. So what we need to do is if we would like to implement our own method, uh, then we need to go to the views. And as I said before, we have built in the uh, methods already provided by model view set. And we have that uh, basic five methods. So we have uh, get all. And then we have, if I will open this model view set, uh, I hold a control and click on this one. You can see you have few methods here and they are cor correspond to methods create will be this one so it will be the post retrieve will be get on the specific record so uh, we will have a specific specific id in the url then we have update which is this one so it will be put and then uh, this is also patch but uh, destroy is uh, this one so it's delete and then list it's a get all of it so retrieve and list it's get but one is the whole list and retrieve is just one record so basically all of the five methods here are available for us in the our view set so whatever we do movies and then it will be available but on top of these methods here we can also override uh, any of those if we'd like to use our own or we can just specify our own completely a new method so how can we actually do that it's very easy so we need to define it as a normal function in the class so definition and then we can name it so let's say rate underscore movie that would be our name of our function and then we do self and we also do request so we would like to pass a request in standard function and what we can do here it's really up to us we have no restrictions here basically we can have our our logic we can ask for the data in our database or whatever we need to do and then we can uh, return something so let's first try to create a something very simple and ret uh, return it and then we'll see if that uh, that is working so let's create a response that's our variable so we can name it whatever we like to uh, name it and then uh, let's uh, create an object inside we can call it message it's working like that and then we can return and then we'll return response at the moment we have no response here we need to import it so I will import from rest framework response import response 
and this is our object that we will return using that function. So we do first we'll response the data and in our case we can response this object that we've created and then we can decide on the status that we will return and then we can uh, status is if we go here you can see status 200 here that means the status is okay so we got it all right but we have other options so we have 500 uh, 400 and there are uh, hundreds of them we can actually invent our own as well but there is uh, some standards that we can use so let's import status from here from the rest framework and we can use it here status dot and you can see here a lot of them available so in our case we want to respond http 200 okay that's uh, the classic one that if something happened and it was successful use it 200 but you can see here you can pick 201 202 and so on and so on so basically that is uh, part of our response and we can get the information like for example in our front end we could check if that was 200 status then uh, do something otherwise do something else but you have a few of uh, this uh, 200 then you have 300 and you can see here you have a 400 which is bad request unauthorized payment required forbidden not found and so on and so on so you have uh, for almost each case a uh, different status number and another popular it's a 500 so it's an internal server error or so on so it's up to you which one you will pick i will uh, use the classic one so it's http 200 okay so http actually i can click on this and i have it so basically the response uh, will be this object so we'll have a message it's working and also will provide a status 200 okay if i will save it now then we could use that method so if i will copy rate movie name and i will go to our postman what we are expecting to do is use on this our url so api movies that's our base url as we do register that in the urls and then at the end we can use the name of our definition of our method we've created so let's try to do it now i will send it now and you can see here nothing happened so this is not available yet and we need to do something else to do it so uh, let's come back here uh, actually we have some errors there so i will try to run the server so this is running now so i will come back here and then test it that again and you can see here this is not found so we have 404 status here despite the fact that we decided to to use the 200 uh, status there so what do we need to do is we need to use a decorator so before the our definition we need to tell what kind of method that will be and for uh, for that we can use action like that we also need to import action So from REST framework decorators, import action. And inside we can decide detail. True. And I will show you in a second what does it mean. Methods. And then that's array of methods. And we will use method post. We can decide for more methods here. But for now, I will keep it like this. So basically what we are doing, we are decorating our method with some extra values. So basically, first thing what we are saying is we want to have this detail true. That means it's not going to be available on the movies slash. It, you will need to provide a specific movie. So detail true means one specific uh, movie. A detail false means on the list of the movies. And then we have methods that will accept it will accept method post only. So I can provide more methods here. If I will save it now, uh, we need to run it. And then coming back to our postman. And let's try to do a post, post method now. And this rate movie is available on the details. That means we need to provide also a 
specific movie here. So we have our movies, then slash uh, ID of the movie, and then rate movie. Uh, if I will send it now. And then we have this keyword argument PK. So what does it mean that this uh, unexpected keyword argument PK? PK uh, stands for primary key. And basically this URL primary key for this movies, it's by default ID. You can decide which of the, your columns of your fields is primary key, but by default it's ID. So basically we are passing in our URL primary key here, which is ID, but we don't do anything with this. We need to come back here to, to the pie charm and inside our definition rate movie, we need to also pass PK. We can also pass it what's the default value. So we will say none is the default value. Now, once we save it, we can come back to the postman and let's test it again. And you can see our return is the object message. It's working. And this is what we put in our response. And you can see st here status is 200 as we expected. So now we have our custom definition for our uh, movies and then we can rate a movie and we can do our something here and we can have our own logic at the moment. This function doesn't do much. It's just outputting our message as we decided to do. But here we can do our logic. We can check the uh, request. We can also uh, output different things bas based on the uh, request. And we'll do that in the next videos. Okay, we have our own method here, rate movie. So let's work a little bit more on this method now. So what we first need to do is we need to get some data for that rating. So we need to check if something has been passed in the request. So let's say if we, we required a stars, for example. So if stars in request data, then we can do this. So we can output that only when we start in request data and then else I can do, for example, something like this. So I will have message. You need to provide stars like that. And then status will be HTTP. And then we can use something uh, like a bad, bad request here. So what I'm doing now, I will make more space here. So what I'm doing now is I'm checking if you have stars in the request data and I will show you what does it exactly mean. And then if you don't have it, then we'll put, you need to provide stars with a bad request. If you have it, then it will be, it's working. So let's test it now. I will run it again and come back to our postman and let's try to do the same method as we've done before. And you can see here message, you need to provide stars. And why we are seeing this? We said here, if stars in request data, request data is that body that we will send along with our request. So basically we need to provide stars like that. So at this point, we don't validate these stars anyhow. So we can do whatever here, whatever, whatever here. And if I will now send it, you can see the message is working. The reason we see this message is because we pass the stars to our request. So it's a part of the request data. So stars now are in the request data. So we can output this. So basically you can see that how we can construct the logic inside our functions. 
So we can uh, decide what needs to be in the request data and then prohibit user to do something if it's not there. And also we can have another checks and logic. So we can uh, decide if the start is integer, if it's uh, actually uh, in between one and five and so on and so on. So everything can be validated here. We can do a lot of things with the data, but I will also show you another thing. So we will uh, have our logic here, but I will uh, try to print something. Whatever we will try to use, you can see here when we run the server, everything what we ask the server, it's printed here. But we can send our own information to that console, to that terminal. So let's uh, do it now. So I will do print and let's try to print that PK here. If I will print it now, I will go back to the postman and send it once again. You can see it's working, nothing has been changed, it's 200. But if I come back here, you can see here that's printed one. It's the ID that has been passed with this method. So if I will come back here and remove it from there like that, it's not working. So that means this rate movie is, as I said before, it's only working for that specific movie. So it will be movie one, that's movie one. And then we will have an access to our PK. PK is a primary key, so basically that's our ID of the movie. So what we can do is we can select that movie from our database. So we said movie and then we can do movie objects and then we can use get. So we will try to get the movie based on the PK. So we know what is the PK primary key from that request because it's part of the URL and then we select the movie. So what we have here is we'll have an access to that specific movie. So let's try to print something now. Well, I will print movie title. That's just a static text. And in here as a second argument, I will pass movie and then title like that. So we are selecting our movie from the database movie objects get based on the primary key, which is ID from the URL, and then we will print the movie title. So let's come back here. That's been refreshed. Postman, and I will send it again. This is it's working. So we need to go here and you can see here movie title Titanic. So this is printed. This is printed here because I have movie title and then movie title here, which is the ID one. So if I will come back here and if I will change this to two, to our second movie and send it again in our control have movie title avatar. So you can see how we can actually select uh, something from our database and how we can manage this. So we have access to our stars now. So we know uh, what is the stars and how the stars will be passed with the request data. We, we check that first and otherwise you need to provide the stars. That's what we output. Next thing, we pro, uh, check what is the movie actual that we target. So we, we have access to this movie. What else we can do? We need to also get the user data. And I will show you how we can actually access the user data from the uh, request in the next movie and we'll finish that function. Okay, let's finish our function here. So basically for creating new rating, we'll need to have three things. So ratings needs to have a movie, user and stars. So coming back to our views, we have our movie, we have our stars, so we can actually put it in a variable here. So stars will be equal to request data and then we can do stars like that because the stars are are in the request data so we know so we can assign this to to the variable and then 
what's missing here is the user so i can do user and normally the user is part of our request so request i can show you the user so if i will do print user here i will save it now and then refresh it so let's try to print i will use the same method again and coming back here you can see user is anonymous why this is happening because at the moment django can't really tell what user i am uh, because i'm not really logged in we haven't done that part yet and we don't have authentication yet normally if you will pass a token as we discussed that in the previous section if you have the token authentication and with that request that that method you will send a auto authorization token then request user will have a information about that user but at this point we don't have it yet so we might save that for later but for the moment i will just put a comment here and we'll come back to this what we can do is we can create our static user we know that we have only one user in our database so we'll do user objects and then i can get id equal to one that's our user we also need to import users and we've done it already here in the models i will copy that and i can put it here so we have our user if i will do user now and let's say we'd like to have username send it again coming back here you can see christian so we select the user based on the id one and that's a fixed id and then later on we'll replace with something more precise so basically we could have another way to do it so whenever we would like to use this function we can uh, also request it to have that user id in the method itself so this one is kind of very robust so it will work for the login user but if we would like to allow other people who are not logging into our system and to make us uh, some kind of uh, rating you will need to store it but we kind of design it this way that in the models we say okay you need to pass the user and that's need to be also uh, unique together so user and movie so in the moment when you decided that you will pass the user you need to actually create your application this way that the user will be extracted from the from the person who is doing that call so if i'm logging now and i will try to do a rating my user will be passed to that method and this uh, method we have it here so it will later on will use this request user at the moment we have our static so what we need to do here we have movie we have stars and we have user so we have all the information we need to construct our rating so what we can do first is we have two options first we will try to check if that rating already exists so if we have uh, something in our database with that movie and stars if we do have it then we'll update it if we don't have it we create a new so in this way we'll have rate movie one method for two calls so it will be uh, like our standard post and put in one method so let's try we can do try and here we'll try to select uh, something from our database and i'm using keyword try here because otherwise if i will do this it might fail and it will break the whole method but we don't want to break it we just want to check if we have already that in the database otherwise we'll create create it so let's do rating we'll name rating and then we'll try to select the rating objects and then we'll try to get and the get we need to do user is our user id and then movie 
will be equal to movie ID. This user is the whole object. This movie is the whole object. So what we are trying to get here is the user is stored as a, if we do here, this model foreign key, that's user IDs. It's not the whole objects stored in a database. So whatever we try to get here, something from here, we are saying this user needs to be equal as user ID because that's what we store in database. So ID are stored in the database. Once we have that, we, if we have something like a get, then it, we can do something about it. So we can do rating and then we can do stars equal to, and then we have our variable stars. And then we, what we can do is rating and then we can do save. And then we can create something if that fails. So if there is no rating, with that user and movie, this will fail. And then we can catch it here and then we can uh, create that object from scratch. So we do accept like that. And then we can use a similar function as we use here. So I will copy most of this here. So basically this time we'll do ratings objects, create. So we will create in this time instead of ID, we'll pass the whole objects because that will be done by us. And then we also need to do stars. So stars will equal to stars. So we are creating here a new object with this user movie and star. So let's save it now. And then we have, we need to run it now. That's all working fine. And at the moment we still are outputting this, but we can uh, actually customize it. it. depends on what we have done. So let's come back to the postman and send it here. And this is invalid leader. You can see here, we are trying to put whatever for the stars, but as you know, we put that validator validators in place, so we can't really uh, put whatever here. And you can see 500 internal server error, so we need to put actual stars here. It's a kind of hint that it's already our method is kind of working, so if I will do two here, which is accepted uh, acceptable value, I can send it now, and you can see message is working. So what we can do here, I will go to another tab, and I will do get method for the ratings and check if we actually have something in our database now. I will send it and indeed we have. So we have ID, this movie one, and then we have three stars, user and uh, movie. And then we have for another movie. So this is movie two and this is movie one here. We try to do a movie two. So if I will let's say this let's let's remember this one so because this rating will be for movie two and that's my user one and then we had stars two so if i will come back here and i will do now stars five and send it again for the same method for the same movie let's come back here and see if that will change and indeed that's been changed so that means we updating the records if i will go now and use this id for rating so that will be two i will have only that uh, rating for this one but i would like to remove it now so i will click delete and send it and this is gone so coming back to the list and we need to do get and you can see here, I have only for movie one rating. So coming back here with the same, I, I won't change anything here and send it again. I'm expecting I will create that rating now. It's working here and I will refresh it. And you can see here it's working. So our function, if uh, if the, uh, this rating doesn't exist for that movie, then it will be created. If it exists already, it will update it. So this is what we achieved here. 
in our method. So what else we can do? Because at the moment, we whatever we do here, we have our message uh, like that. But what we can do is we can output back the data that we uh, passed in. So I will make more space here and we can do uh, different things for uh, try and we can do different things for creating here. So let's scrap this. I will put it here first and then we'll do something. So I can do serializer, that's uh, just a variable. And then we can use a serializer to serialize the data. I will do rating serializer here and I will put it there. So rating serializer, the same way we've done it before, we can pass to this rating serializer what we would like to serialize. We have our rating object there, so I can serialize that. I can also say that's many false, so it's only one, uh, one rating, and we have that data there. So the message is we can change it for rating updated. And then we can, uh, in this, the same object, we can do, for example, result. And then we can do serializer data. So what we are doing here is we select the serializer with our updated rating when we save it. Then we uh, add more information into our response and we pass that response with the HTTP 200. So I will just copy this and I will go here. So this time we need to also apply this create into our variable. So we'll have our rating here. That will be effect of creating our rating. And then we serialize that data and then we can do rating created this time. And we also put it there. So coming back to the postman and let's try to come here and then I will do send. You can see here message rating updated and that was updated. So I can do three here and the stars three are here. So if I will remove that, this one, because I would like to test how this, the output will be when I create something, I need to remove ID three. So I'll do three and then change the method to delete and then send it here. And you can see nothing is there. But if I will now try to, let's do four, I'm expecting the message will be created and the stars will be four. You can see rating created and the stars four. So we have our method here created. So we cover a lot of uh, things uh, here and I've done that in purpose because uh, I would like to show you what are the different possibilities if, when we have our own function. So what we can do here is we can validate the request data. We can select some objects from our database using this uh, syntax that we talked about it before. Then we can do different things based on the existence in the database. And then we know how to output something inside our response. So this is the object that we actually constructed on our own. And this it's optional. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do this. And then it uh, all depends on how you would like to do things in a front end. So if you require some kind of message for your uh, user to be displayed like a rating created, you can pass it as a message and then the result will be updated results or whatever you need to do. You have full options here because all of that it's our own code. So we can decide it. What will we put in the object? What will be the message? What will be the status and so on and so on. So you can see here, we've created a simple uh, method of our own, but it will be very powerful because we can have one method that will work for, it, uh, for either update or uh, for post. Okay. We have our application almost ready. Our API is very functional at this point. 
But uh, there is thing that uh, I would like to do for our backend to be more functional. So basically what we have here is we might have uh, ratings and we have, might have a uh, movies here. So if I will use this, we have a movie. But basically what I will need to do is to get some information about the ratings for that specific movie. So what we can do is we can do what we've done in our previous section is to include that rating in the mm, sorry here in the movie serializer include that uh, ratings and do related name here but in fact i don't need to see all the stars object in our serializer because if i will see a list of uh, ratings here and let's say star two and a half to one and a half and so on and so on that's not really useful what we would like to see uh, here or display on the page is to display how many ratings we have and also what is the average rating for that specific movie so how can we achieve that we need to create our own function and we can do it in um, many places and we've done it already in the views that's our function and we use it but also we can go to the models and we can use a function here we can create our function and refer to that function also we can do the same for the serializer let's do it in models and i will show you how easily we can create a new uh, function and how we can use it in serializer so let's say we would like to have a function for a number of ratings number of ratings like that and then we have a self and that self will refer to the current movie so if we'll call that function on the movie then it the self will be the movie itself so what we need to do we will need to get ratings and then we need to check how many ratings we have for that specific movie so we can do ratings here that's a local variable and then we'll do rating and then I can do objects filter by movie is equal to self so what I'm doing here is I'm selecting all ratings in our database that have movie I like this movie so that means for each movie we will run this function and the self is that specific movie so we will filter for each movie here and then what I can do is I can return length which is length of uh, of an array length of rating like that so if I will save it now our function is ready now so I will copy that and I can go to serializers and I can include it here so number of rating it's a function available on our movie that function will be available for us in the serializer so let's go back here and test it now and you can see here number of rating one number of rating one so if I will go to ratings like that and we need to use get so we have two ratings let's remove this rating four so I will do rating four slash and then I will use method delete removing that we have only supposed to have only one rating now and indeed we have one rating so let's come back here refresh it and we can see number of rating for this movie is zero number of rating for this it's one so in that very easy way we could include extra information and that's very custom information that we've created manually here so we don't need to stick with the, ver the methods that are available for serializer or for the other models we can create our own so let's do another function 
and use something similar so definition and we can do average rating same self and then what we need to do we'll need to copy this so like that we'll uh, select all our writings and then we'll create another variable and I will call it sum which is at the beginning it's zero so what we will do is we'll loop through the writings and we will sum it up so for rating in ratings we'll do a loop here and then I will do sum at rating like that so basically what I'm doing here is I set up sum to zero at the beginning so it will be zero and then I select as in the before method I select all the ratings for that specific movie and then I loop through all of them so this ratings here it's an array of all the ratings for that movie and we loop through them and every time I loop I have a local variable rating available and I just add this rating to the sum. So basically every single time we loop it and we add it here. So at the end of this line I have already summed up the result here. So this is the sum. But in fact I would like to see an average. So average can, I can do return sum divided by length rating so I will have sum and I divide it by number of ratings we have in our system but that might throw an error because if the length is zero then I am not allowed to divide by zero here so what I need to do is I need to check it if bigger than zero then I can do this else return zero or whatever we we can return null or whatever we have here so basically that's what we have here so once again I set up a sum as zero then I select all the ratings I loop through them and add each rating to the sum and then I return sum divided by number of ratings for that specific movie and I do only that when we have at least one rating otherwise I just return zero because if I will have zero divided by zero then it will throw an error so I will save it now let's come back to our postman and test how it works uh, actually I forgot to put average rating in our serializer so I need to go here in the serializer another field average rating coming back here postman sending again so unsupported operand uh, I view at like this for a rating but in fact I should do if I go back to the models I'm adding rating here but that's the rating is an object rating but we would like to add rating stars so stars is the uh, real rating rating has more um, things like movie and user but we would like to use the stars for some some of the average rating so I'll save it once again and then test it and you can see average rating 3 average rating 0 so we have our two methods here and that object is very optimized for our front end we'll ask for the list of movies and you can see here list of movies this uh, one movie will contain ID title 
we can actually exclude this ID if we like, but we have title, description, number of ratings and average rating here, so we can actually display that on the, uh, on the screen and we, will, uh, we can do that using only one query to our database. So we don't need to query uh, movies and then ask for ratings and calculate that on the front end. That would be also possible, but I, this is more optimized. And using one query, we can get all that data uh, coming back to us. So this is now functional. We have ratings, we have movies, we have all the information we need. In the next videos, we will focus on doing our user login and logout and to register new users. Okay, our data is finished. We can see everything in our serializers and we'll be able to see that in the front end. And let's allow users now to log in. We already remember how to do it with a token authentication. So let's enable that in this application. We need to go to the settings and we need to add another application. So it's a REST framework out token like that. And then what we need to do, if I will save it, token so what we will need to do is migrate now so python tree manage pi migrate so no model name rest framework uh, i misspell it so frame like that so we'll save it and i will migrate now and I can see to migration has been applied for our database. So that is uh, done. What we need to do is we can go to our admin page now. We can go run, run this. And then here I can go slash admin. And we have tokens here. So I will generate a token for current user. And we have our token here. So that's been added. What we need to also do is we need to enable a kind of link that will give us some options uh, to login. That means I can provide a username and password and I will have that token back. So let's uh, do that now. I will come back here and then we need to go to the URLs we can do it on either URL we like. We can have it here along with others, but I prefer to have a login on the main URL, which is in the, inside our projects here, because it's not part of our API itself. It's a, let's say, extra top, top level. So what I can do is I will duplicate it and we can name it as we like, but out is kind of short and easy to remember. And then we need to add uh, the method. So from rest framework out token views import obtain out authentication token. And we can use it here. So what I will do, uh, the server has been uh, run, but I can refresh it just in case. And then we have another URL here. So let's come back here and then we can actually, we can do it in Postman. So we have, instead of API, that's on the main URL. So it's authentication like this. And let's test it with get. Of course, get is not allowed. So we need to do a post. post. And then I will try this and you can see username and password is required. So let's go to body and instead of stars here, we can do username and my username is Christian. And then we have password and the password was also Christian. So I will send this and I will send it here and we have that token back. I will copy that token here and that token I will be able to use in our 
application wherever we need. So if I will go to authorization here, uh, I will go to headers here and then I will do authorization. I can pass token, this one. So I can get, uh, let's do get and API movies. And I can say, send it with my request. At the moment, we don't do anything with that token. And what we can do is first, we will restrict only login people to see the res resources here. And also what we need to also do is to come back inside our views and use that request user here. So let's uh, take a look what we have uh, so far. We have rate movie. So I will go here and then I will have just one, uh, let's say movie first and I will do ra uh, rate movie and I will tr try to use a method post. I will send it now and you need to provide stars. Of course we need to do that. So I will do stars like that and then we need to also provide movie and we need to do a user at the moment we don't need to have a user so let's uh, do stars and movie so we'll do stars let's say two and the movie will be one so if i will send it now you can see uh, rating has been updated and the uh, user is one because we hard coded that. So if I will replace it now with the user here, I can do print and let's try to see what's in the user. So I will go, I can print it extra information here, user. And that's been refreshed. Let's go back to the postman and try to do it again. So you can see here, cannot assign automated, uh, anonymous user, a uh, rating user must be a user instance. So the problem for this is, I will show you before we have that error. You can see here we had user anonymous user. So despite the fact we provided and we pass uh, this headers here, authorization token, it's still Django doesn't know how to deal with this, how to translate that token, how to use it. And we need to actually tell Django that we will use it in our view set. So if I go here, you can see we have query set and we have serializer class, but we haven't tell and Django that we would like to use our token. So we can do it now. Authentication classes, and we'll have a tuple here, and then we can do token authentication like that. I also need to put a command end, and we need to import it from REST framework authentication import token authentication. And we have that. So if I will save it now, actually I can copy that and I can also include it for the rating. So we'll use token authentication for both. So let's refresh the server and coming back here, I will send it again. And if now, Everything is fine. You can see user is here. And also, if I go back here, you can see user Christian has been printed. And the reason why I see that printed here is because I have this. So now we switch from this fixed one to use the user from the token authentication. So if you pass in the headers, authorization, token, and the token for your user, Django will extract from request 
that user because this token is connected with that user and we can have it from the request object available. So we can actually remove this part and now this is automatically extracted. So if I will be logging as a different user and try to do a different rating, this will create a different uh, rating object in our database because the unique together user and movie will be different. So that's it. That's uh, our uh, login option. We will need to also allow users to register and we can restrict some of our application to be available only for login user. And we can do that in the next video. Okay. Let's our users to register in our system. At the moment, we have one user that we've created with create super user command in the terminal, but this is not the way to do it for the users in our application. We should allow them to uh, register. Th that means create an account in our system and then log in with that credentials. So where, how we can actually do this? Normally we have user enable in the Django, but we don't have anything here that we can use for registering uh, new users. So what we could do is we, we can do it in many different ways and depend how you would like to use your application. Basically, you might have methods from the URLs that will create a, so you, you can gather all the a username and password and whatever fields you will need to have and then you can create that object for for him like in the similar way we've done with our uh, custom one or we can just implement the view set and we'll uh, get all the methods that are coming with this uh, view set and it will be available for us so what i can do basically is i will copy whatever we have for the movie so far and i will paste it here we don't have users yet or user view set and we can create one. So user view set will use this user. We have that user here imported from the out models that's built in Django user and we'll create a view set based on that user. So we need to also have user serializer we need to import it, but we don't have it yet. So I will create that in a second. So I will import that. So we have a new, fresh new view set. This is exactly the same as we had it here, but for a different model. That was for our own model and that's for a built model, but nothing's actually changed. We will use the same way as we've used it with the, our models. So we have a view set here. Let's do a serializer now. We have user serializer imported, but we need to create it. So here we will do a similar thing here. So I will just duplicate it. And we need to create user ser serializer. That will be model user. We need to import this user and we can import it just like that. So Django contrib out models and then import users and I will put it in the serializer here. So this is all gone. So we can do ID and user name for now. And this is our serializer. That means we can actually use uh, this serializer with the ID and name. Also, I have to pass a password. And I will tell you why in a second. Basically what's happening here is we want to use this serializer because that will be a default serializer in our views here. So we will use the serializer for all our methods. That means it will also be used for a post method, which is creating record uh, in our database, but we will use it as a register. That means whoever wants to register in our database, it will need to use the post method for this view set. So if we will use the view set, uh, this one, and this serializer, so this serializer needs to have username and password. Uh, but also we need to do extra few things 
that will prevent people to seeing that password. Otherwise, you can uh, just use a method get, and then you will see this uh, password for different users. So we also need to hash that password. If we will send a request to our uh, server or, or send username and password, we want to hash it and store it in a database, hashed, not uh, like a normal string, because passwords need to be hashed. Okay, uh, and hashed means they are need to be decoded, so you can't just open the database and see people uh, passwords this way. Uh, another step we need to do is we need to go to the URL, but not this one, we need to go to the URLs for our API. And in the same way we register a view sets here, we can register our users. I will duplicate here, I can do users, and then I can do user view set. That is available here, and I also need to import it. So we have a new view set, and we have that users. So all that is done now. So basically what we can do is if I go to Postman now, I could possibly do users and slash, and then I can use method get. Uh, I think we need to run this first. And then send it now. So AP, I think I have two slashes here. And then send it now. And you can see here, my object is there. So for first, I should not be able to use that method because then I, I can uh, see all the people in the system if I will hack that API. So we can actually remove it from the view set. And then you can see here ID, username and the password. And the password is that uh, long string here that I have. This is hashed password because as you remember, I put a hash a password Christian, but that has been hashed and converted to this long decoded characters here. So what we have here, it's already a view set that is working, but we need to do some extra steps here. And if I will go to the serializer, we can actually include some extra thing before we will start creating our users. So we can include here extract works and that will be now on an object and we can include here password that will be another object and we can do write only true and we can say required also true. So what we are saying here is we are passing more information for this field password. It will be write only. That means we won't be able to see it. And also it will be required if we want to register this. So I will save it now and let's come back to the postman and see how it looks like now. You can see here the password is gone because this is write only so we can send the password but we'll never be able to see that and this is already gone but it will be required if we want to send that post so i will have a post now i will go to the body and let's say i will do username christian2 and that's the only thing i will send now so i will try to send it and you can see here password is still required because we decided we will have write only so it will be hidden from the get but it is required for sending but if i will send it now this the password will be stored as a normal field because we'll just you send a username and password as a normal strings and that will be stored we need to kind of override the built-in function that is in the view set 
uh, that is method create and we'll implement our own and then it will be hashed all right so I can show you uh, how we can do that now so definition create and you can see here ID is out of field all the all that so we have self which is the current data and we have validated data validated data that means it's a data coming from requests that already meet all the requirements for our model for the user we have the validated data so we can have here a user a variable and then you can do user objects create user that's a method here that we can use and that's a special method for this user so it's create user and then we can do asterisk asterisk validated data so we'll take the validated data that we sent to our request and we'll use the create user special method what we can do here is we can return that user so I will save it now and basically this create method was already included but we overwrite it with our own version of it and then we take the validate data and we use the create user which is special function for creating users and then we return that user that has been created so let's come back to our postman and see what will happen if I will pass a username a password here so in this I can do Christian Christian up Christian two so username and password password like that I'm sending that now and you can see here ID is two and the username is Christian two so we have created this username using the post method for for this users so we already have an option to log in and we already have a option to to register our users so our api is almost ready we need to do some uh, extra steps to secure our api and turn it off the things that we don't want to expose in our api okay in the last video we've created a um, new method for creating users and as you can see here at the moment we have two users in our database so i would like to show you something if we go to the admin here and we have users here that's two users that uh, has been created one is the created with super user another one we've created with the postman and uh, so all the information as we pass it will be here and that's fine so we have username and we have also hashed password but the problem is if we go to the tokens we have only one token for the christian which is the first user so django automatically is not creating a tokens for each user we've created so what we need to do is we need to fix it if we go to the serializers here and this is the method we have used for creating our user and the user is created uh, correctly with uh, this uh, method but we also need to create a token so what we can do is we can do token and in the same way as we've done it with uh, users above token objects and then we can do create and then we do user equal to user because at this point we already have a user it will be created it will be returned to this variable and we have it available here so we can should be token we need to import it so basically this object that is being created will be passed to the token and we'll create a token from here so now we need to import the token from rest framework out token models import token and we have that token so basically at the at this point it will uh, work what we can do here is we can we could pass it uh, this token uh, to a return if we need it but i don't think it's needed so what we can do is we can just uh, create it and we don't care at this point for, for a token uh, but you have an option that you will assign to variable and it will pass it in return and it will be available 
So let's uh, test it now. Let's go back to the postman and we have our, po uh, well, let's change it for a post method. So it will, will use username and password. And this time let's create a Christian tree. So I will send it. Uh, it's not working. I think our server is not running, is it? Uh, we have invalid syntax. In our serializers line four, so let's oh, run it again. I think that was before we actually save it. So we run it again and let's try to send it. And you can see ID three, which is new user and then username Christian three. And let's go to our admin and check if we have actually a token. So we refresh this page. And in fact, we have a token for Christian tree. So at the moment we are creating users and this will create a token automatically for us. So that token will be available when we will try to log in. So let's do that login now. So I will do out and that's our method for authentication our user. I will use the same username and password and we are expecting to see that new token. And that will be the post method. So send. And you can see here the token is. So the token ends with C06 and that's C06 for that Christian user. And at this point we have our application kind of ready for this, but we can also do some extra steps to secure it. So by secure it, we can implement different ways that uh, it, it will be restricted to see for certain users a certain part of our application. So what we can uh, actually do, we can go to the views. As we've done in the previous parts, we can also implement some uh, permission classes. So first let's go to the settings and in, anywhere here we can create uh, our settings for a REST framework. default. That's supposed to be singular. Like that. We've done that uh, b before. So basically what we are saying is default permission classes for the whole application will be is authenticated. So we will restrict our application to, for login users only. So this is authenticated. It's now available for all of this. So if I go here and then let's say I will try to get the list of the movies uh, like that movies and then I will send it here and Actually, we have some problems now. Uh, so object is not callable string. Uh, let's see, what is that? So permission for permission in self permission classes. So I think we need to add it first uh, inside our views and the movie. We can go permission classes here and then we can do is authenticated and then we can do from rest framework permissions we can do is authenticated like that so basically we're uh, telling that this needs to be authenticated let's check if that was the error and in fact, authentication credentials were not provided. So if we'll use this token for the user tree, we can actually authorize ourselves. We can use it in the headers. And this is how we're going to use it in the front end. So I will put authorization here. And then value will be token, capital token, space. And we can paste our string here. So we'll send it now. And I can see a list of the movies are available. So what we can do is we can take this and we can apply it for rating. Oh, I have already talked about uh, authorization. So the permission classes here is authenticated 
will be for this. But uh, in fact, what we can do is, for example, it's really up to us how we'd like to design this, but for permission classes, we can do allow any. We need to also import this from the same permissions. So allow any for movies and we can do is and authenticated for rating. So I will save it now and let's say movies and I will disable this authorization. So the movies works without the authorization. If I will go ratings, I need to provide it. And you can see I can do that. So this all it depends on us how we would like to restrict certain parts of the application and we have a full control over over this so let's say we will keep it like this if you want to have a uh, ratings or create a uh, ratings then you will need to have uh, this authentication authorization and then we can have uh, actually let's restrict or our movies as well because we'll kind of lock our application under the login so we need to be logged to see the, the application so we will have it uh, authenticated another thing i would like to show you is we have our rate movie method here and that means that we don't want to have the post method and for a put method so we have our rate method that will do either update or create a record but in fact in the model view set if we go here and then we can have update model mixing and that's one method that is available this one so it's kind of allowing user to do something that we should restrict it because we have our own so what we can do is if i'll copy this update and i go back to the views uh, on top of this uh, rate movie what we can do is I will come here and create another method and that method will be used instead of the Django built-in one so what I can do is I can say message you can't update rating like that so this is what we have now and then we can provide the message also I can restrict the create one so basically what we are saying we override the existing one in Django so they won't be used our will be used and in fact we disable them because we are not going to do anything here we'll just uh, return the message you can't do this so you can't create rating like that so let's come back to our postman and you see we have our rating so let's uh, try to post our rating and then we go to the body then we do stars let's say four for a movie uh, movie let's say one and the user will just create a user uh, we will use user one so let's try to use the normal post for the rating and you can see here must be a unique set so basically what what, what is happening uh, now is it's kind of restricted by the unique but if we will do something that is already not unique we don't have any uh, rating for the user to if i will send it now we are uh, still using this and the reason for that is because i kind of put it in a wrong place so if i will come back here and i will take it out I should put it in the rating because that's what we want to restrict we want to restrict putting our ratings from the rating so update and create will be disabled so if I'll go back here we will need to remove that uh, ID 5 so I will remove rating 5 from here first and I will try to send it again so 5 has been removed and then let's do post again with the same data as we've done before so send it now and you can see here you can't rate uh, create rating like this and the same way will be with update so this is the way we can actually prevent using the default built-in methods because 
if we use model view set it will be open to everything so it will be open to all the five methods and if we want to stop using them we can override it with our own custom code here and then we can just display some message here so this is the way you can actually control your application so we so far created a ready application we have our authorization so we can log in the user we can create user along with the token we can get that token and then we can authorize the, this and we have a full models for um, movies and we have our own method for creating ratings and at this point we are ready to move to another section which is our front end and in the front end we will use all that data that's coming from our database and we will uh, use it as a json to display that on screen